Welcome everybody, my name is Michael, or Kubera, but we don't have to use that anymore, and I still keep thinking I'm Kubera. So I got access to my MacBook, and I wanted to thank the individual who discussed about popping off the key, because that worked. The key doesn't work one out of every ten times, but I was able to log back into my laptop, and now we're uploading, obviously, to the channel. NFTs, and about paper hands and learning to take losses. We have to discuss about this because I have zero clue what's going to happen with my own two NFTs, but I do know there is a fair chance that it might go up and there is a fair chance that it might continue to go down or it might rebound, but I'm still going to have to take a loss. Obviously, there is a difference between paper hands and losses. And I'm going to show you a clear example of how to prevent massive losses like a lot of these guys are. And it's constantly discussed in the Nifty Gateway Discord. So today I'm going to show you some extreme examples using the two pieces that I own and a few of the other pieces that I was thinking about or have owned in the past. So come along with me on this journey because altogether, if I sold right now, I would lose, thanks to the 15% fees every single time you resell, because 10% goes to the artist and 5% goes to the platform, 15% on the two pieces, yikes, well, I'd lose over $1,000, and that's not including opportunity cost. You have to factor that in. So ultimately, it's around a $700, $750 loss from Chad Knight right now, and around a $100 loss from Marius Sperlich. So I'm going to hold on to both, obviously, because I'm not going to sell for these rates. But my hope is that they go up within the next few weeks. If I do take a loss, hopefully it's not as bad as this one. But you also have to include something else, transaction fees. So I had to transfer from one exchange to another, get from Bitcoin into Ethereum, transfer that. You got gas fees. You got got exchange fees, you got withdrawal fees, so well over $100 was lost additionally in fees and opportunity costs. We're on Nifty Gateway right now, and there's been a fair amount of drops since Chad Knight, but we can find them all the way down here. Classics Open Edition OE. This is the one I have, Roko's Basilisk, and Omnipotence, Par Omnipotence Paradox is selling a little bit lower. Why is that? It's because with all these pieces, you have to look at mint numbers. Lowest mints get obviously higher value and also how many were minted in total for open editions. This had more, so there's more people who would want to sell. And that's why you can see the ones selling for $600 here and one selling for 725 and one selling for 700 and 724. So I have this piece and I wanted to show you an extreme example. Even just comparing $600 to 725 let's see who's selling that is a huge difference mr erased and let's see so he was getting pretty desperate because he wanted seven thousand dollars for it five days ago and now he wants six hundred dollars and he bought it for one thousand five hundred dollars so if you plug in six hundred dollars that is five hundred ten dollars that's almost a thousand dollar loss right there on just this one nft not bad. And if you used Ethereum to purchase the transaction costs, all of this stuff, that's well over $1,000. Well, if we go to global history, we're able to see what has been going on recently. Only sales. People have been selling for $500, 505 $400. Crypto Kanto bought this from Jacob for $400. That's a massive loss. And then we see normal rates here. Six days, nine days, three days, $900, $1,780. Chad Knight, whoa, that's pretty crazy. Chad Knight was buying pieces from his fans. So that's pretty cool. He bought from one person for $1,780, which is, I think, profitable. Yes, $1,513, so profitable. And for another person, the same day, for a massive loss, Summer's Ray took a massive loss. So sometimes you actually have this happen. I also saw Steve Aoki was purchasing his own pieces back. And this is why I love artists like this, because they actually care about the audience. And they also want to help out all the people who bought pieces. But anyways, you can see that not long ago, it was $1,000. Obviously, the prices have declined quite a bit. 
But the difference is, you have to also include the fact that Bitcoin is not doing too well. Here we go, $51,462. And it's down from 56, 57, 58,000. Not too long ago, it was at $61,000. So this isn't certainly helping the NFT market. So let's go back and let's just click on Roko's Basilisk. Now we see that there's a $700 piece right here, 724, 749. So the floor is around $700. But as soon as these three pieces are sold, it immediately goes up from 850 to a thousand dollars this means that these three individuals are underselling themselves and they're panicking and this is not where you want to be you can see there's a huge difference between 700 and a thousand dollars and let's click on another piece i wanted to look at these pieces in particular this guy all right so he wanted to make a profit that he kind of gave up on it that's okay let's take a look at this piece this was created by Chad Knight and is owned by Bryce. This is Bryce's only nifty, so I get it, he's probably panicking. But with my particular piece, you can see that the floor should be around $888 because we had two pieces purchased on the 18th. No activity has happened for the past week. It's March 25th, so no one has purchased anything. And that's also not good if you have no liquidity, basically, in the market. But you can see that here was another piece for 888, 869. All right, there was one guy for $700, but then you have 900, 1,149. And this is just a difference of 24 hours or even less. So I don't get it. There's $888 pieces, but people are offering them so much lower for 700 something dollars. Obviously, they're looking for any liquidity. They're panicking, but every single time the market goes down, people don't want to buy as much. So the only option you really have besides going to the very bottom, it's a race to the bottom, is hodling onto the pieces until the market returns right now. Now, if we were coming into a bear market, maybe it would make sense to try and get rid of these pieces if you needed that money or whatever, but we are still on a very long-term bullish sentiment for the majority of investors right now. This means it is a temporary dip, just like last month, just like two months ago. It is a lot harder to make money with NFTs right now. And we're going to make a separate video on why that is. But then we see, all right, you know, there's a few people. There's a few people who want to sell at massive losses. And even on the same page, you still have people who are very, very close to trying to break even. Now I want you to take a very close look at this piece by Mario Sperlick. This is my second piece that I have. And this is another individual here. So Jameson Harris and Montserrat Gotted Pot. You might remember this from my money laundering video about NFTs. So this guy purchased it for 5000 uh, no sorry, he purchased it for $500 and then he wanted to put it on sale for $5,888. And Jameson Harris right here, six days ago, purchased it for a price. This is definitely money laundering. This is a price that was more than 10 times the market value at that time, six days ago. And now he's selling it for $400. That's a massive, more than $5,000 loss, $5,500 loss, because then you have to have put 15% fees on this. This is also driving the market down. You have somebody who wants to sell it for $400, and most people want to get more than $500. You can see this is the first page out of 32 pages. Most people want to get above and have at least a few dollars profit or break even. And sure, the prices have certainly slumped. For example, one piece is getting really desperate, 350 between 388. All right, race to the bottom, 388, 389, 390. But this guy's just like, oh, let me just sell it immediately. Matia Pagliarusco. And you can see, bam, bam, every single day. Oh, let me just get rid of it. Let me just get rid of it. 350. What next? $200. There have been people who have been selling, as you can see, bought for $300. So even worse than 350. But you also have somebody who bought for 750. You have this guy, this guy who, who sold two pieces, one for 420 and another for 240. And this guy, I really don't understand because this guy actually has a fair amount of pieces, 37 pieces. And some of these were worth a fair amount of value. And he still has more. So it's like, I, I don't really understand why you would do that. So there's a difference when you purchase an NFT and you're looking for a quick buck reselling. I get it. We've all been there. 
I wanted to quickly flip faces. It took forever for them to mint. And I did flip them for a small profit. And then I saw, wow, I could have made $1,000 if I waited another day or two. Well, now they're reselling for $500. they have been all over the place. But still, every single person who originally bought the faces NFTs are profitable right now, even with that 15% fee. So it can happen and earlier in the markets for many, many months, a lot of the open editions, and now it's not so much the open editions, it's mainly drawings, but even some drawings aren't profitable after the first few hours on the secondary market. Meaning the lowest mints get obviously resold for a hefty profit and sometimes it's botting. That's also another video that we're going to have to do. How Nifty Gateway and Gemini are unfortunately, well, not trading the botting situation as well as the community would like to, but I have high hopes that they're going to fix it in the future. Regardless of that, immediately after a few pieces sell on the secondary market for a profit, then the prices start to go underneath and everybody else is at a loss and then it's the race to the bottom so what can you do if you see that the entire nft market it's not just your piece it's the entire nft market apart from a few select artists which are basically the blue chip stocks like a beeple or from some crazy situations like there was a sophia piece you know sophia the robot i've never heard of her before it's a robot that actually has a citizenship in saudi arabia anyways so she created her own art pieces and now Everybody's going crazy. So people are purchasing for $1,500, $2,000, $3,000, and now it's for $20,000. And this was just a few days ago. Despite the fact that the entire market is down, these pieces are going against the tide. It's it's crazy. And then there was also, I think, let me just show you. Here we have X Copy, And this went absolutely insane because this was selling for $0.99. Cents and mainly botters got into this. But the open edition has been doing really well. As you can see... This one's $999, and maybe this one kind of felt it's not doing so well anymore, so, right? Never mind about that. 3,333, 3,900, okay, 9,999, but there we go. There's a profit on this one, and it's a pretty big profit. For these, maybe they finally started reacting with the market, but initially, oh my goodness, this was selling for $2,000, $3,000 yesterday. People were going crazy, and there was a huge secondary market for this piece and this piece as well, and it looks good, 3,900, but once you factor in the 15%, there we go, 3,315, so it is actually at a loss, but trust me on this, both of these pieces were extremely profitable if you were a reseller, so despite that, it finally caught up with the market, now let's take a look at Andrea Benacetto because this was the Andrea Benacetto collaboration with Sofia the Robot. Let's see how they're doing. And I think this piece was one of the lowest. As you can see, it's kind of, it's super, super weird. So let's go to the ones that are on sale, lowest price, and we could see 14,500. So it has reacted to the market a little bit. It was higher, 14,555, 18, 15,000, 16,000. So it was higher last night, but still a huge, massive profit from $1,500, uh, $2,500, $1,500, 10000 right? Let's check out this, which wasn't the open edition. Yeah, th these pieces are worth a little bit more. Maybe not this one in particular, but yeah, this guy's underselling compared to all the rest. This is, what, this is the whole point of this video. There's always going to be that one person who just wants to sell their piece, even if this is a huge profit, if they could just wait for a little bit, right? Because th they're not going to lose money on this. They're going to only potentially lose out on making more money. And in this case, since everyone else is so, this is also rarer. There's only 30 pieces, 29 other people you're competing with, and not every single one of them is on sale. It just doesn't make sense to undercut yourself by more than $1,000, like maybe 500 But this is exactly what we're talking about. But as you see, some of these pieces have crazy, crazy prices. And this was just a few days ago. There's two options. Either you huddle on or you take that loss at the current moment. There is a chance that you might go back into A, having $0 profit, but you didn't lose any money, or going into a little bit of profit or potentially even a lot of profit later on. 
you have to realize that some of these earlier pieces, for example, Bitcoin angels or even beeples, people were selling beeples for a loss or they could have sold it for so much more money if they just held on. Just like with Bitcoin, a lot of people were purchasing Bitcoin and Ethereum and I understand Bitcoin is, it, it's here to stay. It's been around for so long. Without it, th this wouldn't even exist. I, obviously, Bitcoin is so much lower risk and NFTs are high risk compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum and the classic coins. But there are some artists that are here to stay. And just like ICOs and DeFi, 95%, maybe 90% of these projects that these artists are going to go away. And some might be scabbers and some are obvious cash grabs by musicians. And all right, that is what it is. People are trying to take a opportunity and make you know, take advantage of this opportunity, make a lot of money while they still can. And some people will stick around and watch their beeples grow even more in value or ferocious or some of these crazy artists like Pac. He's having an auction with Sotheby's pretty soon. So all of his pieces started to go up. But there's always, always those paper hats, people who desperately want to sell and they will keep lowering their price, lowering their price, while the rest of the market is staying right above here. That's the same thing that happens sometimes with Bitcoin. People want to sell right now. They're not willing to wait even a few minutes, which is absolutely ludicrous because obviously Bitcoin is liquid. Compared to NFTs, it might take days or weeks sometimes to sell art, but that's just welcome to this world. That's how it is. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Keep most of your money in Bitcoin and only invest in artists that you actually like. So you don't want to get rid of these pieces immediately. I could have flipped Mario Sperlich and my Chad Knight pieces both for a profit immediately. But I decided, you know what? It's a risk I'm willing to take. And sure, I did lose a fair amount of money, but technically I didn't lose until I sell. So I think the market in its entirety is going down right now. It could be completely wrong. And, you know, maybe I'm going to have to take a massive loss pretty soon. But at the end of the day, most of my money is in Bitcoin. And my Bitcoin, sure, it's gone down a little bit, but I'm still very profitable on that Bitcoin. I don't care if it falls back down to 30000 then, you know, I'll start to worry a little bit because maybe we're going back into a bear market. But there's also a good chance that Bitcoin's going to recover sixty, seventy, eighty thousand, maybe $100,000 pretty soon. So I don't care. All right, maybe I did spend a little too much of the Chad Knight pieces. Our next video, we're going to be discussing about how some of these pieces, open editions, are just a little overpriced right now. That's also what's bringing down the market. I think we're getting back to reality here. But some of these people can't hodl on to Bitcoin for their dear lives. They can't hodl on to NFTs. And that's why you see huge differences sometimes. And what really surprises me is I, I've seen so many examples of people who are selling for a loss at costly every single day. I look at who is this seller that's selling at such a drastic difference compared to the entire market. And I see sometimes that these people have multiple NFTs and they're selling every single one of them for a loss. So if that's what you're doing, if you want to make a quick buck right now and you're failing because you're not the lowest mint editions and it's taking forever for your piece to get minted and by the time you list it, it oh no, it's too late and everything's going down and then you sell for a loss every single piece, Maybe it's time to reevaluate this whole situation. I'm hodling onto my pieces. That's it. I think a lot of other people should hodl a lot as well if they really enjoy this art. If they're not in it for the money. I think the market may recover as long as we're in a bull market. And even if we fall into a bear market, the blue chip artists, the blue chip artists will still have their price value. They might fall. They probably definitely will over time, but not every single one of them. Some might still keep going up during the bear market. Some definitely will for a little bit. And then by the time next Bitcoin super cycle, like three, four years, then everything will start to grow like crazy again. So I think most of the market is crap, but I'm not worried about my pieces. There's definitely some pieces that I've avoided and we're gonna be discussing about that more in other videos. You have to keep a watchful eye on this. It's much more difficult to make a profit right now, especially with flipping. The market moves so quickly. I mean, last when I started introducing you guys to Nifty Gateway, I was still late to the party. But the Discord, I remember it being below 10,000 followers. Now it's at 16, what, 17,000 followers? So it's grown super quickly over the past month. The final thing I wanted to say, why am I holding on to Mario Sperla? He is going to have a collaboration, most likely with Slime Sunday. Slime Sunday has had plenty of collaborations in the past and they've done very, very well. And a lot of people who are, you know, paper hands and they're selling these pieces don't actually care to follow the artist. I'm following Chad Knight. 
I don't have a Twitter. I'm banned, so I can't really. But I still check out his Twitter. I'm following him on Instagram. I'm looking at Marius Sparrow. Like also following him on Instagram. I see Marius is getting into the Discord chat. People are talking with these guys. We saw Chad Knight buying some of his pieces up. If I was... If I had more NFT, I'd still be following these other artists as well. And I think a lot of these people don't even realize there's a collaboration coming up or they don't realize there's an auction with Pac coming up. There was people who were selling well below the floor for Pac and all of his pieces are now worth twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. And there's people who have no idea what's going on behind the scenes. So if you just did a little bit of research and you actually looked into who the artist is that you're trying to support, you can make a better educated guess. For example, there was Pantones coming out yesterday, uh, but it was it was complete trash. And the whole NFT Discord decided, you know what, this is crap. And immediately people had losses. And that's okay. That's, you know, sometimes if you don't like the art, I thought it was absolutely crap myself as well. Even though I have no idea who Pantone is, other people who were following his work said, this is nothing compared to his actual work. His actual work is great. This was just a quick cash grab. You got to do your research. Anyways, that's it for today's video. Paper hands, potential losses, opportunity cost. What am I going to do? I'm hodling. That's it. That's all I'm going to do. That's what I can advise. If you have a piece that you think might go up in the future in value, uh, even if you're wrong, it is what it is. There's hopefully some diversification in your portfolio. Hopefully this is a buddy that you desperately need. And to all the people who are constantly selling at a loss, stop. Do your research uh, because it's just funny. It, it happens on every single piece, even the super profitable ones. Uh, even for Sophia, there's always going to be that one person, even if you're making profit, even if you're making profit, you're still selling so much lower than the actual floor. Is. And that's that for today's video. So thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, definitely do that. Hit the like button, leave your comment down below, and we shall see you guys in the next video. Have a great one. Bye.